you know, the critics are saying, oh, Farrakhan talking all this black talk and went over to this white man, L. Ron Hubbard. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> if it weren't so silly, I am you. I haven't changed my religion. You know, all the prophets taught us to seek truth from the cradle to the grave. I said, wherever knowledge is, you should seek to be a possessor of it. You know, some of you went to school. You went to college, didn't you? Some of you? How many of you in here have a college degree? May I see your hands? Were all your teachers black? They weren't? You mean to tell me you sat in a class with a white professor and got you a degree and now you're working for white people? Getting a salary? Did you ask your teacher how many times have you called black people nigger? It didn't matter. You were seeking a law degree. You were seeking a degree in your specialty. So it didn't matter what religion that person was, what race or ethnic group they belonged to, because you didn't go there to join their race or their ethnic group or to condemn them from, for being white or Asian or Hispanic or black. You went there to get some knowledge that would help you to be better at what you wanted to do with your life. You know, I have been fighting cancer since 1999 or 98 when we discovered it, or 97, and uh, it almost killed me. My first experience with doctors was at Howard University Hospital because I, I saw a... Um, a, uh, a cartoon in a New York newspaper that had Farrakhan on a gurney with Jewish doctors about to, and they had X's around my neck. And these doctors were going to execute Farrakhan. So I said, well, maybe I better get out. I better. I better go find me some black doctors that may have a better idea. <laughs> so I was so sick, they put me on a plane. My daughter's a nurse. Oh, by the way, she didn't get her degree from a black school. She got it from DePaul University. And her teachers were white. What about that? Did that make her less my daughter? Did that make her less a Muslim? Did that make her less a concerned black person for the rise of her people? And because she went to DePaul under those white professors and got her degree, she saved my life.
Now, I'm going to close this point, and I don't want to visit it again. Do you know that there are no people on this planet who have suffered the kind of slavery that black people in America and the Western Hemisphere have suffered. Now, everybody has their suffering. I mean, there's no ethnic or racial group that hasn't endured some kind of suffering. But yours has been the worst. Worst how? Because you have been deprived. We have been deprived of self-knowledge. That's a terrible condition for you not to know your origin in the world, your history. Speak your language. Have a name from your own father. Know something about your history and your culture. All of that was stripped from us and we were placed in a form of slavery unlike any form that existed before us. Not chattel slavery for a day or a year or a month. We feel the pain of Jewish people in their suffering. Some of them said they suffered for 5,000 years. I don't think so, but, but even if you did, fine. But you still know who you are. You still have your culture, your religion. But here's a people absolutely stripped. Our manhood totally destroyed. Our women ravished before our eyes. A young man was telling me the other day about a young man who he was cutting that man's hair and that man told him how when he was young and married to a beautiful black woman in Mississippi, how there was a white man who would come to his door and he would have to go in the barn while that man had sex with his wife. She would be crying and, and saying, oh, she didn't want to have any relationship with that man. But his manhood was not such that he would die before he let another man take advantage of his wife, kill the man, kill himself, kill his wife, before he let anybody just have her like that. suffered unspeakable horror at the hands of our former slave masters and their children. Look at your women. How many of them have grown up in this world with their virtue intact? until they married. How many of them have been raped, are the victims of incest? 
how many of them have been abused, you would be shocked. I'll leave over there and come over here. How many young men in this audience have been abused sexually? by men in the community, friends. And we carry these scars into life and try to live a life, but yet in the back of our heads, even though we bury it far, far away. These things haunt us. These things are impediments to our human development and progress. Islam is magnificent. It's beautiful. We search the scriptures, as you will see and hear today, and we come up with wonderful teachings from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and God himself has guided us. But I found something. in the teaching of Dianetics of Mr. L. Ron Hubbard that I saw could bring up from the depth of our subconscious mind things that we would re prefer to lie dormant. But the auditing process brings it up, and it's like bringing up demons out of us. And just as this book Bible says, that was the work of Jesus. How can you say you love Jesus the Christ when he was an exorciser of demons out of the people. And when the demons were coming out, they were screaming. They didn't just come out peacefully. When those fellas were coming up out of the human consciousness or unconsciousness into consciousness to bring past into present so that you could get rid of the past and make a future for yourself. Mm. How could I see something that valuable and know the hurt and sickness of my people and not offer it to them? So the criticism, well, you know, Mr. Hubbard was a racist. I, I don't know that. I don't know that. And I wouldn't care. You have, you don't have a good understanding of racism. You don't. I don't have time today to go into it, but hey, can you imagine white folk calling me a racist? That Farahan is a racist. How am I a racist? Well, you talk bad about white people. No, white people history talks bad about them. And there are some white people who want to escape that history. 
and try to be better than their fathers. I don't fault them for that. Farrakhan is a racist. How many people have I enslaved? He's an anti-Semite. How many Jews have I beat up? Boycotted. None. But we have the record of their deeds against black people. Should not I expose them to their own record? Some of you, my silly brothers and sisters, would say, get over it. Get over what? You can't keep talking about what happened yesterday. Hell, what happened yesterday is what's driving your madness today. I found a tool that I know can help us. And I thank God for Mr. L. Ron Hubbard. And I thank God for his research and teaching. He's gone on now. So if he was a racist, that went in the ground. But I didn't find racism in his book. If he was a hater, that, that went in the ground. But I didn't find hate in his book. If he wanted nothing to do with black people, well, maybe that's in the ground, but his word was that this teaching that he had would find prominence once it was exposed to black people and black people laid hold to it. I am not in a disagreement with that. So you can continue to criticize me. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to be displeased with you. I'm going to keep on loving you until I love you into sense. Because you can't break me down. All evil said and done to Farrakhan does not bother me.